Uh, this is lecture one, computer programming B, and for those that want to follow along, I recommend that you open up Trinket. I want to point you to the course webpage down here. It may look a little different for you, but it should have computer programming B spring 2019, and I'll center it, have a look, and you click on that. This will be a uh, feature of this class. There's Google Classroom, um, there's this uh, trinket.io page, and this is where you saw the really large Garfield and uh, one of my favorite songs and a whole bunch of other stuff. My intention behind this was to have all the assignments be on here, um, turn in things, I post my slides and stuff, but unfortunately they have to make me pay money per student to use those features. And I was like, no, I can't do that. I have public school, no money. So I just use the features that are free and then use Google Classroom. And this will just serve as a blog and reference to whatever we do. So if ever you're absent or lost, go look at here. Um, it has some cool features, which I'll demonstrate to you right now. So here, right now, is uh, what we did on Monday and on Tuesday. Uh, if we click here, you'll see um, yesterday I linked the chapter 4 of Interactive Python to, for you to read. And then for today, I couldn't sleep well last night, as two weeks' time is just enough to build bad habits, and uh, my sleep schedule is all kind of crazy, and I'm awake, and so I did a little uh, word barf on what I wanted to talk about. Feel free to read this uh, as a supplement to whatever I lecture at you. Cool? And I'll be largely following this uh, structure during my uh, lecture today. Questions so far? No? Okay. Is this recording? I think so. Well, if not, I have my other one. So then we pull up a program. No, where's the link? Okay, so now I'm going to click on the link, like on the blog post over here. I'm going to go to that interactive Python website, pull up chapter four. And here is where we should be skimming. You'll see some cool tools, cool programs. It's a really nice textbook. Um, for your reference, they use this exact te textbook uh, down at City College for their um, Python class. And one of my friends, who's a TA there, uh, recommended it to me. It has cool videos um, by the author showing you what he's going to do. It also has um, pretty easy to read. And also, this is pretty nice. It has embedded uh, code things you can run. So for this one, it makes a little window and draws a right arrow. And you can edit this, change it around, change the names, and run it here. Uh, and it even gives you exercises, which you'll see similar ones on your quiz when that happens next Friday. So I really encourage you to play around with this, and it doesn't take much time. You can see if I do this, will I get the right code? Do I get an arrow? Check. Oh, no, well, that's wrong. So maybe it goes up here. Ah, yeah, yeah. And it tells you if you're right or wrong. Immediate feedback. I want to then bring your attention. Let's go work with this program here. Um, doesn't matter to the one. I just wanted to demonstrate to you some differences because we know um, different programming languages. I want to highlight some important things about Python. Here, we notice there's a um, turtle whose name is Tess. First thing, comments. This is how we do so. This is uh, the pound symbol uh, or the number symbol. Uh, the younger generation calls it the hashtag symbol. That's how we do comments here. And a reminder, comments are uh, ignored by the computer, but they really help the readability of your code to explain in plain uh, English what the heck's going on. BG color, uh, parentheses, light green, uh, to someone that hasn't coded before, that makes very little sense. Uh, light green makes sense, but BG color, what the heck is that? So that's why the author of this code put down set window, background color. And two, light green. Helps the user make sense of it. And then you see more down here. If you wanted to do multi-line comments in Java and JavaScript, you used to do the little slash star and then star slash. But in Python, to do that, you press the quotation mark three times. And whatever is between there, notice how it changed color, gets ignored by the computer. Test forward, test left, test forward, all this stuff is being ignored. You can also multi-line comment with three of the double quotation marks. I just used the single one. And you can ignore this line of code. Really useful for the very beginning of like functions or programs to tell the user, this is what I want it to do. And 
Uh, really helpful skill to have um, when turning in assignments. Let's say you don't meet the deadline. It's like, oh, Mr. Chan, I intended on my program to do this, but I encountered this bu bug, whatnot, blah, 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 and you tell me all about it here, and I'll keep that in mind, as I will become a user of your program. The audience is me, and maybe your classmates. Later on, depending on your careers, maybe your uh, audience will be um, people on the internet, your software team, maybe people, other people you'll work with and encounter, friends, maybe strangers on the internet, uh, the friendly kind, I hope. Um, yeah. Another thing to highlight about that's specific to Python is notice at the end of these, you don't need semicolons. That's absolutely safe to not have semicolons here. Though in JavaScript, you can optionally have a semicolon there. Java, it'll complain if you don't. Next. So, Python values readability. That means one of the results of that is this line of code. I'll click run. Actually, let's go back. Let me not break it first. Run. And we see down here a green background with a little uh, blue evidence of the turtle's movement. And let's say I accidentally press space and I press run here. Run. Oh, it still works. It shouldn't work. I press tab. Ugh. Okay, it is, okay, there, that line, run. Why are you still working? It's supposed to be broken. Oh, I understand. The output is, yeah, yeah, yeah. So, um, so having this space actually did break the code down here. When we press run, notice that it flashed red around here. So I press run, it should say no error. Everything's good. And then if I give it a space, let's say line seven up here, and I click run, this turns red, and now I have an error. Bad input on line seven. This single space will break your program. That goes for tabs, um, which should be four spaces, and also returns. These are called white space characters, and Python is really sensitive to those. You'll see later on in the examples, like for for loops, if statement, function definitions, instead of using squiggly brackets, like uh, let's say, Maybe in JavaScript, we were like function, uh, thingy, and then parentheses, and then you did that. And same with Java. Uh, maybe you had a void here instead. Um, yeah. You don't need this part in Python. Instead, it's replaced by a colon, and then you do some indentation. That indenting and this white space takes the place of balancing your little squiggly brackets. No longer. You have to listen to the compiler complain about misbalanced uh, squiggly bracket and whatnot. So that's pretty nice. Questions? None. Okay. And then I go back, skim through my notes. Ah, here's another cool thing about Python. Let's say you wanted to use some variables. You don't have to do var x equals 1000 anymore, for those that know JavaScript and for those that know Java. If you need to work with a variable, no longer do you have to t tell the computer what uh, type of variable you want, like int x over here, and uh, char array, whatever it is, uh, s equals this uh, mumbo jumbo. And no longer do you need double float, uh, and whatever x there is, uh, other data types, Python is something called a dynamic typed language. So it waits and sees what variables, um, and it's smart enough to know what kind of variable you want to work with. A drawback of this, and you'll, you won't will really experience in this class, is it makes Python kind of slow compared to some other languages, like Java. Do, 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 do. And then I turn to the really cool part on this chapter. Everything here should be pretty familiar, um, especially for my programming A students last semester. And then section 4.4 talks about the for loop. This is where um, uh, the beauty of Python really shows. Their for loops are really cool. Very, uh, it, it makes a lot of sense. And I, you wonder why Java does it uh, Java's way after seeing a couple loops. So take a look here. In this example that I've pulled up on from your interactive textbook, you have a turtle named Alex, and you make Alex repeat the pattern four times. I, kind of like your int x or var x, is your variable that keeps track of where you are. I goes from zero up to three. And then it repeats this code. So a uh, volunteer, what do you think Alex is going to produce when going forward, turning left 90 degrees 
forward, now left 90, forward, left 90, forward, left 90. What's going to be the final result? Feel free to shout it out. Yep, it is in fact a square. And let's see. Let's check. Boop, 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 boop. Ah, great. It is a square. Uh, good job, Alex. And Alex doesn't respond because I didn't tell it to. It's not smart enough that. Fine, Alex. So that's really nice. But here's the cool part. So we go down here to the second example. You can now have a list, not just numbers. You can have words there. So take a look and think about what this one will do. If this code up here goes from i from 0 to 3, and down here you have something called a color, what do you think is going to happen to um, Alex? What's going to be produced? Feel free to shout it out. Do we still have the square as a prompting question? Students are silent, but they're thinking, and they're probably nodding their heads yes, um, or kind of. And then A color, it goes from yellow, then it turns to red, then it turns to purple, and lastly it ends at blue. It repeats that um, uh, pattern, whatever is inside this for loop, four times. And you notice we have that colon there, no longer the squiggly brackets. And this is a keyword, in and for. So we run this, and take a look. Did I not delete the line? Oh, it needs it needs this thing. Alex dot color. Is it color? Looks like that. Uh, a color. There we go. So now you have repeated not only on numbers but also on words, uh, also known as strings. Pretty neat. And to do this in Java would require a little bit more uh, work, a little bit more lines of code, especially around those character arrays. And if you want to use your string object, uh, have fun. Ta-da. Then I go on the example that I made over here. So this is the final product. And I want you to examine that code here. I do a similar example, pretty much copy and paste that same thing, and then take a look down here. I have a for loop, it, uh, and now we have this range function. Because you're making your arrays or lists here for your loop to walk through, it um, is quite tedious if I wanted to go from 30, 31, 32, 33, da -da 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 -da, up to 100. Python saves you some time. It has a handy dandy range function for your loop to go through. So this one, goes and makes uh, an array that starts at 30, ends at 100, and it has every number in between by default uh, counting by 1. And it goes through and repeats this thus how many times if I start at 30 and go to 100? If you're thinking 70, you're absolutely right. This code repeats 70 times, and now I want to point out uh, here, speed. Some of you may be Playing around with that, default speed I think is 1. It goes pretty uh, quick, but maybe you don't find it quick enough, and you crank the speed up to 10, and instantly, almost, you get that picture. And when we play this, you'll see something similar to that. So it's a very short example of uh, what you can do. It draws a bigger rectangle, and as it's repeating this 70 times, it goes faster and faster until it hits that 10. You'll see that arrow along the side. And now it's done. Ta-da. For loops, they're quite useful, and you can do so much uh, with them for now. Uh, I'll explain the actual behavior uh, another time on like why it works so nicely, but um, I wanted to introduce this chapter. So let's say, for example, you chose to do the United States flag, and you had to generate a star. And um, we know enough to not have to copy and paste that star code and adjust those x and y coordinates ever so slightly so that they're all um, equidistant from like the upper left-hand corner and all that. Uh, you're not going to copy and paste. You know more. So you're going to use a loop, a f a specifically a for loop, to repeat those stars, change some things, maybe put a loop inside a loop, and have those 50 stars for the state. And then the other national flags, you have different kinds of patterns. Cool? All right. Last part of today. A uh, uh, change for those that were with me um, last semester is that this, I take a little shift around language and vocabulary I, I teach you. And if you're in AP Java, you'll be familiar with these first couple parts. 
uh, because you have an AP test to worry about and they test you like can you understand the question you got to know the vocabulary so for my computer programming A kids I put less of an emphasis on that that first semester but now we transition a bit I want to teach you that formal language so you can be smart and choose to apply this in whatever realm you find possible um, either in your careers at college or whatever I want you to equip you with um, this um, knowledge and part of that is going back to the basics. So although I started with chapter four to give you a sense of a cool uh, library and making a little turtle move around, uh, now we're gonna take a step back to like chapter one, two, three, four. And my goal is to get through chapter six in a, a timely way so that you um, are um, know the basics and also how to describe them. And I list some topics here. Uh, and that means I'll start today with talking about data types and pointing out to you that in your code, in your little trinket thing, here's the console. So console, uh, for those that had me last semester when we did temperature conversion, this is where everything was printed. For those in Java, at the end of your uh, processing IDE, integrated development environment, you had a little console that would tell you stack overflow, you're making me do too much, please stop. Um, missing semicolon, missing squiggly bracket, whatever. Um, the error messages get printed there. And Python doesn't have to, um, it also prints the error messages there and tells you what's wrong. But here's the cool thing. It's interactive. It is an interpreted language. So that's like JavaScript, but Java, those that are familiar with it, you have to like compile your code. You have to make object files and Java files and class files and whatever. You don't have to do that with um, Python. It just reads the code from top to bottom and will know what to do. And as a result of that, you can interact with it. So down here um, in this console, let's kind of make it bigger, kind of. Down here in the console, let's say x equals 10. And if I print x, it shows me that value. x is 10. y equals a string. Or let's use another word. This is a string. This is a sense. Sure. OK. Uh, and then y equals that. And now let's say I wanted a decimal. Let's call d equals 2.5. Awesome. D, yep. D is in fact 2.5. This is where you'll also be printing to the screen various things. And uh, like for debug. And now I want to introduce you to the type function. 2.0 is of the class float. And then 2 by itself, although mathematically uh, equivalent, is different for the computer. Notice right there, type 2.0 is of class float. Type of just 2 is something called an integer. Let's test this out some more. Type, what about negative 2? We remember our mathematical definitions of integers. They include negative numbers, too. What about two, negative 2.0? Nah, still float. Decimals, rational numbers, like a fraction, for example. Negative 2 divided by 4, 34. That's of type float. It matters, the type of data that you store in. And that's what's going on under the hood. Let's say we want to check the type. What about those strings? This is a sense. Ah, STR stands for string. Perhaps those handy dandy arrays type. It has its own type too. Square bracket stands for arrays. They call them lists in Python. And uh, if you look under the hood, look at how this is stored in computer memory, that's why they have these different classes. And they interact with each other uh, in Python really easily. But in other languages, it matters, uh, like the kinds of types you have. And you're trying to fit things to one another. And for um, now, just know that there's a difference between 2.0 and 2. There's a difference between what's going on for like a list compared to a string, so on and so forth. That's all they talk about in chapter one. And I'm done talking at you. Questions? No? So I'll be walking around. Uh, ask me then, one-on-one uh, -on -one instead of on this class. And I think I'm finished. All good. Your time to code. desktop.